Is that fair? Thanks for order. Okay. We'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Uh, welcome, everybody. We're glad you're here. This is the regular meeting of the uh, Jackson Board of Selectmen, March 9th, 2017, 4 o'clock. We'll call this meeting to order. And our first order of business is the same as it typically is to approve the minutes from our previous meeting. This is the regular meeting from February 23rd, 2017. <coughs> Uh, and these meetings were respectfully submitted by Amy Murphy. Um, do I have a motion to approve these minutes? So moved. And a second? Second. Have you both had a chance to uh, go through these minutes? I have Dick? one. Yeah. Yep. Uh, on item 7B, yep. Joyce wondered what the the conclusion uh, response was a certain amount of, of days before the, the town meeting. Not 60. Not 60 days. Okay. So a certain amount of days. So the edit, edit would be scratch out 60 and put a certain amount of days. Yes. Okay. Before the town. Yeah. You got that. That's the only one that. All right. I've been on with. Uh, John, did you find anything you'd like to uh, propose an edit for? No, I did not. All right. Well, then we'll go ahead and uh, uh, vote <coughs> on the uh, amended minutes from these meetings. All those in favor of approving the minutes as amended, say aye. 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 There you go. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh. All right, and uh, we don't have any action items to address today other than uh, Julie Hoyt. Uh, did we get the specs from Pat on that backhoe no, yet? No. He no. So he's still waiting for Well, it's Brenda. Yeah, she hasn't responded she's, yet. She hasn't responded. She, okay. I mean, she just said she was going to let us know that she has... Okay. Well, maybe that means they didn't get them yet. Maybe we'll, we'll follow through on that between now and our next meeting, which will be after the annual meeting that we'll address that again. And so, and then they... Uh, Draft letter for the Nestle Nook. Was that you or was that Kevin? Or Kevin what? drafted the letter. Okay. And um, he sent it, but I think he's also talked with um, Mr. Sear. Okay. All right. So we'll we'll uh, kind of yeah. have the end of that conversation during the building inspector's report. Yes. T sounds good. Thanks. Upcoming meetings. Big week next week. Tuesday, March 14th is uh, the date of town elections and the polls are be, will be open from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. at the Whitney Center, as they are always are these days. And then uh, our annual town meeting will be Thursday, March 16th, and that begins at 7 p.m. Hope to see you all there. And then our last uh, Gathering of the month of March will be Thursday, March 30th at 4 p.m. will be our next regular meeting right here in, uh, in this room at 4 o'clock. And then uh, in April, we will meet on April 27th at 4 p.m. right here in this room. So move on from action items to agenda item number three, public comment. Anyone... Uh, have anything they'd like to comment on at this time? There's another spot down towards the end of the meeting if you do. Uh, that takes us right to building inspector's report. Kevin, you want to come up and rally around the table with us? <laughs> uh, hey, hey, no. Uh, well, let me say the first thing is uh, the Nestle Nook. I just actually talked to Robert Sear. And uh, we've been playing phone tag back and forth. And uh, he actually called the office and I was here. 
And um, so I sent out a letter to him, telling him that what buildings had to be renumbered, relettered, um, and to take off the old numbers, basically. That's what I told him on the phone. So he's going to get that done, supposedly, very soon. And he understands the importance of he that. He does, yeah, especially now. Response. Yes, yeah, and yeah. we okay. went over that. Great. And um, and then also there was a question about the gate in the class six. A lot. Right. Yeah. And um, so I guess there's a way so the fire department and emergency services can get through the gate, either siren or a code. And that's all going to be programmed in there. And the gate's not locked right now or anything, but I guess in the future it will be closed. And we found out that basically that that is a private road. There's there's references to a class six road, even from an attorney. Mm -hmm. It's really it depends how you interpret it. And uh, so I guess we're going to have a um, a road uh, meeting in April and um, talk about that. I guess one of the second will be there. Let the guys know about that yet. Mm -hmm. But and then the make, mm -hmm. and, and after that, make sure. Um, at that point, maybe get a letter drafted out and make sure it's classified as a private road for him. For We're going to have Peter review the information after we have that meeting. Right. Okay. <coughs> and so, does that mean he has documentation that We're it's gonna not provide a class what we 6? Have. We're going to provide the deeds and the documents we have to Peter. Okay. And is so does Bob here saying he's in possession of documents that describe I think that there's a lot of I think there's a lot of stuff here that going through the, the different files yeah. and maps and just some of them go through all that okay. and it takes time to put that mm. all together. Right. Um, it, it, it's a little confusing. So. And, and um, can you explain one more time to me how the gate opens with a siren? Um, I guess there's a listening device on it, you know, a microphone too, that when sirens open it. I've, I've seen that before. <coughs> um, but then there's always the code. There should be a code punched in there for us that we can either have and it'll probably be something simple. Because otherwise, I think the next thing too is there there's probably is an override key and the thing to do is to put a, well, we have those Knox boxes. Uh -huh. Put a Knox box on it which has the key and we can use the key too. And that's probably, you know, just Cheap thinking about it, that's probably something that has to be done with the key, yeah. Yeah. Because it's the, um, you know, liability type thing. Mm -hmm. So is somebody gonna test that? Oh that yeah. Audio? yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, we usually like, you know, go up there and turn your siren on. Try it, yeah, because most emergency vehicles do have okay. it. I mean, uh, great. I mean, even if Jake pulls up in his own private vehicle, so mm -hmm. get that all fixed. And Excellent. And, uh, and then we have a building permit. Um, one, it's on uh, 292 Dundee Road. It's the convertible. Studio to a uh, one bedroom uh, of a new bedroom, and they had a upgraded septic system. The house had a three bedroom. Um, I think yeah, it did have a three bedroom septic system, and they just put in the last fall a five bedroom. So now they have a total of four bedrooms there, but they do have a five bedroom system. I can check that. That's actually six ninety two. That's my typo. Oh yeah. Six ninety two. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> That's right. And, um, and then we have an update on the um, the pickleball court uh, permit at the Jackson uh, Tennis Club. Um, I spoke with Dick before about it. And, it's kind of a gray area to read in the zoning and uh, the actual Jackson building codes. Um, and I think the easiest way to think about it is just to use an example like, you know, about the, um, if you have a driveway and a place to park your car in front of your house, you could make a, a you could basically pave the whole entire front of your yard if you wanted to and have a parking lot. There's nothing to stop you from doing that as long as it's not in the, in the right of way on the road. <clears throat> but it could even be in the setback. There's nothing to stop you from that. So this is, <clears throat> that's, that's how we're, I'm working at it now. And I guess if they put a fence up to it, as long as the fence is under six feet tall, it doesn't need a, bu a building permit and it's allowed, so. Um, hmm. So I think- Does that mean they're gonna change their intention of a six foot high fence? I don't, you know, right now there's a fence there. It's a big tall fence. They gotta remove that fence to put the, the cord in anyway. And there's really no need to have a, Anything over six feet, it would probably be a you know one of those regular 
I mean, even a four foot fence would work, just so the ball doesn't roll off the road. That's mm -hmm. yeah, basically all you do. What's the height limit on the fence then? It is six feet. Oh, okay. anything over six feet, oh. you need a yeah, you need, you need a, a permit. permit. Six. Six. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You don't because right. I thought it was said, okay. I said you could put a split rail fence in your in the front of your house out by the road in the right way. In the right way. Well, not in the right of way. Oh, not right. in the right of way. It was setback. It was setback. It was setback. Right. Set, right. set 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 yeah. And not need a permit Got for it. that. Right. Got it. Yeah. You can put that fence up and it's yeah. fine. So yeah. I think that's what they're headed for. Right? Okay. Great. So you, obviously you've had yeah. recent conversations. Right? Yes. Yeah. And most right of ways, if you see, if you look where the telephone poles are mm -hmm. on either side of the road, they're right, usually right there. That's that's the right of way. It's usually when feet. <laughs> Um, I think that's all I have. So you're gonna, they're gonna make these changes, and then you're gonna revisit the permit. Yes. Yeah. What? I'll, oh, yeah. They. I'll write a letter to them, um, make it official, and they'll get their refund from that permit. And um, I guess the spring they'll see them putting their pickleball card in. So, be a lot of happy people. It's exciting. Yeah, it is. Yeah. We had people come in today, and so... Looking um, for pickleball courts? No, oh. <laughs> with the Jackson Tennis Club, and so we basically told them to just call Kevin to find out what the requirements were for getting that through, because it was denied because of the fence. <clears throat> Great. Did either one of you have any more questions for Kevin? We got him up. Good, good. Do you want to talk about the grandfathering, or I can bring that to the planning board tonight, and we can look into that further in a little debate? Yeah, why don't you okay. bring it to the planning board, and we can discuss that later on, because I don't even know much about it. By, by me, 21 minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a plan. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Kevin. All right. Very informative. Um, we'll move on to new business. Agenda item number five. Five A is a uh, trustees of the trust funds withdrawal request. So I will uh, entertain a motion to. Um, request the following withdrawals from the trust funds as I indicate. Looking for a motion to approve the withdrawal of $210 from the Police Department Equi Equipment Expendable Trust Fund 0051 for Warrior Tactical LLC dated uh, February 23rd, 2017. Invoice 2017-08 and also a motion to approve the request of $7,087.85 from the Transfer Station Expendable Trust Fund 0028 for miscellaneous invoices. So move. I'd make move. Well, I'd second it. Though. Very good. Uh, uh, motion and a second. Uh, either one of you have any uh, <coughs> questions or anything you'd like to discuss before we call for the vote? No. Okay. Very good. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Very good. Thank you. And uh, well, we'll finish signing off on that. I didn't do the other one. one or two together. No, yeah, they were all on the same page. Sorry. No, no, there's just the one spot to oh, sign. Okay. They were both on the same page. Or two. And the. Uh, we've got a uh, Department of Revenue Administration. Uh, median equalization ratio here. And this is just uh, informing us that uh, 
Based on their most recent survey, they've determined a median ratio for the land, buildings, and manufactured housing in our municipality in tax year 2016 to be 93.6. I believe our 90, our 2015 ratio was 99.9, .9, so uh, which is typical that those adjustments are made throughout the year. We have an abutter notification here with the town as an abutter. That is an FYI. Um, that um, tax map R18, lots 11 and 12, owned by Lynn Stamey on Carter Notch Road and Maloon Road. Uh, the applicant, Lynn Stamey, seeks to adjust the boundary line between lots R18, lot 11 and 12. So, um, that is the butter notification. Questions on that? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's coming to the planning board. Yeah. No. Is that, when's your next meeting? Mm -hmm. Oh. You sticking around for that? No. Me either. Nice guy. I ain't going to stick around for that meeting. All right. Excellent. That was good. He's so pleased with himself. Got me out of that one. <laughs> Okay, so, and we have uh, another, um, our annual uh, Bartlett Jackson Transfer Station Scrap Metal Agreement, and this is the two boards jointly agreeing to allow Roger Labby to purchase for the amount of $1,250 of scrap metal that's deposited at the transfer station for a period of one year. Uh, when that year begins April 1st, 2017 and ends March 31st, 2018. This is always the time of year we entertain this uh, agreement with Roger. Um, either one of you have any, uh, any input on this before I look for a motion? Um, I don't have any input on the fact that we'll probably, once we get finished with the project, we might want to revisit this because we do, you know, we, we're trying to collect monies for the scrap metals, we can use it for ourselves. I, mean, I don't know if Roger's picking out more than 1250 or not, I, we don't really have any way of kind of measuring that, so I know it was a little concern to some of the Bartlett selectmen, but uh, certainly at this point I'm not going to... Yeah, tear apart the agreement, but something we might want to look at once we get up and running with the. Full. But he doesn't get the money for the aluminum. No, no. it's just it's just the metal, just the metal scrap metal, metal pile, right? Yeah. But he gets he first dibs on it, which scavenge that for exactly. copper and brass, right. right? Then have the rest trucked away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, it's not like we'd be making much one way or the other, but in terms of you know the. Probably the proper way of doing business. Somebody collecting our scrap, we probably should give them all the scraps so they have somebody pre-pick it. You know, I just think that's kind of mm -hmm. maybe somewhat inappropriate. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I know this ends up on my radar about this time every year, and then it goes away after we sign it. So right. I'm wondering if there might be. Um, a time of the year we want to make sure we have that conversation by, or if you just want to wait till next March or whatever, but I just throw that out there to think about. Nothing we have to figure out tonight. So uh, we'll go ahead then and uh, entertain a motion to uh, sign the uh, scrap metal agreement with Roger Labby that will be effective from April 1st, 2017 to March 31st, 2018. Make that motion. No, I'll second. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Very good. I'll set an outlook reminder for that <coughs> next February. Yes, we can bring that to the other board timely. That'd be nice. Yeah. Thank you. Give everybody some, some planning time if there are questions for Roger. I mean, I'm sure I would almost hope from a business standpoint that he's pulling more than 1250 a year out of there, so it's worth his while. Yeah. Yeah, good idea. And on this uh, ninth day of March <coughs> 2017.
Next up on your new business, uh, Article 5E. We do have some planning board um, adjustments that we've been asked to consider. I'll start off by <coughs> reading a letter to the Board of Selectmen dated March 6th uh, by Betsy Hardy. Uh, dear Bob, Dick, and John, by this letter I am respectfully requesting to be moved from my member position on the Jackson Planning Board to a position as alternate. Chris, Chris McAleer is uh, currently an alternate and would like to move up to membership. This would be a positive step, I believe, giving others reason for joining or for choosing to join the board. Please approve this change, allowing me to continue to serve Jackson on the Planning Board while also offering others good opportunities to participate. Sincerely, Betsy Harding. And then we received this letter without a date on it, but we got this, what, yesterday? Yeah. Or today? Yesterday. 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 Okay. From Chris McAleer. Sirs, I've been contacted by Betsy Harding regarding a potential opening as a voting member of the Jackson Planning Board. I am currently an alternate on the board, and Betsy has expressed interest in exchanging her status as a vote, voting member to that of an alternate. <coughs> Betsy asked if I would entertain taking her place, <coughs> and I would like to ask the Board of Selectmen to consider me for that potential vacancy, as I would very much like to continue participation on the Planning Board as a voting member, respectfully. Chris McAleer. So, given that that was the only interest, is he the only alternate currently serving right now? No, I think there are two. I don't want to go back. Uh, uh, um, okay. Okay. I think it's, it's Chris oh, and Darren, yeah. oh, but I think <coughs> Darren Lovett. Lovett. But I, is he the one that, that they removed because he wasn't showing up? Well, they didn't officially remove him. Darren. No, Darren's been fine F okay. as far as an alternate, and he he moved him from a regular member to an alternate member, <coughs> and he was fine with that. I do remember when he moved over to, he was a regular member at one point. Right, so Darren, I Darren and Chris are listed here as alternates. No, uh, look at the handy-dandy annual report as wow. well. All that information is right in there. Thing you would ever want to know oh, about the town of Jackson. So maybe this would be a good time to ask you guys. Normally we have our board appointments effective April 1st. There's always a crunch time, so my suggestion is that we move them the start times to either you know maybe May 1st so that we have time to go through the town meeting and then make them effective where we're not late. Um, but I have to double check. I don't know if April 1st was any sort of required date or whether it was just a date that was chosen at one point. But I think we were supposed to have it in place by April 1st. By April 1st. Is that a state RSA? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I will check on that. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. So if that is a required no, date, yeah. um, is there a way we can we could try to get notices out and everything to discuss at the March 30th meeting? Well, I think so, and I'm the one that kind of put the brakes on this a little bit when this came out because it just seemed like it was best left for addressing after the town meeting. If there's a board change every year and uh, people come and go and make decisions based on, you know, just <clears throat> getting through the one night of the year where the legislative body convenes and does its business, it just seemed to make more sense to me. But if there's an RSA tied to it, then it doesn't make sense to get the postings out really, really late because we're trying to encourage participation <coughs> and discourage it. So if there is a required date, maybe we should start sending these out in February giving people plenty of time to respond. This particular move is just a housekeeping right. move. Right. We're right. just going to do that yeah. anyway. Right. But you're right, we should get it out earlier. Okay. As we should get <coughs> yeah. So you want us to send it out then? Yeah, I, I, I think it'd be great to confirm whether that is... Okay. Uh, uh, I'll find out tonight. Okay. Oh, perfect. Okay. Great. I've got it on my Excellent. Thank you. 
So back to the matter at hand here. Uh, I'm looking to uh, accept a motion from one of you. Make that motion. To uh, uh, remove uh, uh, Betsy Harding as a uh, voting member and over to an alternate member and Chris Harding or Chris McAleer from uh, an alternate <coughs> member to a voting member. And you've already made that motion. Made that we'll motion. That. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, very good. And so these will be the appointment forms that go to Betsy and Chris. Does the alternate have to be sworn in? Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, because. Does Betsy have to re swear in? As, you know, with a different you're status. supposed to re swear. I don't think Betsy swears. Every swear. time you're in. <laughs> I swear. I'm <laughs> going to make up for it. No. Okay. And I am sworn up. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Okay. Um, and yes. we'll uh, get them in to do their thing. <coughs> Probably just one minute to tell me if they're both going to be there. Good, yeah. okay. And I can deliver <coughs> these tonight. Okay, great. Because you're going to be here at the planning board meeting. Yes, yes, thank you. As opposed yeah. to John and myself. Yes. Actually, those go, to, those go to Karen. They just get a letter to go to Karen. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll have to. Um, you can tell them, but we'll need to do the. People. We need to give those to Karen first. Yeah. Karen. Okay. Then we'll turn this back in, but I'll tell them that it's in motion. In motion. Well, even though she's still on the planning board, I'd like <coughs> to thank Betsy for her years yeah. of service and uh, welcome Chris on as a, as a voting member to the board. I know he's very active as an alternate and he stepped yes. up when we had that opening. And great. from what great. I understand, he's good input. added quite a bit, so that's great. That's wonderful. Uh, exchange quality for quality on that board. <coughs> Next up on their uh, new business is. Uh, an interest forgiveness request. I'll just uh, read it and then um, we can uh, discuss it. Dear Selectman, I'm writing to request forgiveness for the $27.76 of unpaid interest on my latest tax bill. I have lived in Jackson for over 10 years and have always paid my taxes on time. In fall of 2015, I unexpectedly stopped receiving my tax bills electronically. Karen Burton and I tried unsuccessfully to correct the problem, and to this day I am unable to receive my tax bills via email. At that time, I requested to start receiving paper bills in the mail, but apparently my email address was left in the system, so I never got any paper bills. In short, I have not received a tax bill in over 18 months. As soon as I realized what had happened, I went to the town office and paid my bill in full and made sure my email address was permanently deleted from the system. Karen assured me I will start receiving paper bills in the future. I don't believe I should have to pay the accrued interest since I had, have not been receiving my tax bills even after requesting to be switched to paper bills over a year ago and have made a good faith effort to work with the tax collector to resolve this issue. Thank you. Sincerely, Ryman McLean. Uh, this was dated February 10th, 2017. Uh, any... Uh, Thoughts or opinions on this, uh, John or Dick? I think we should uh, relieve him of the burden of the, what is it, $27? Um, shouldn't affect our budget much, but it would be sh showing good faith on our part to relieve him of that. Mm, I kind of feel on the opposite side of that one, Dick. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I remember there was one instance where uh, my check was lost, and even though I had written it and sent it and been, did due diligence to do that, it was unfortunately misplaced and found several years later, and I had to pay the interest on that. Uh, yeah, but again, you know your tax bill is coming up every six months. It's, it's not something that you, you know, it's a surprise. Um, you know, you've been here for 10 years, that's 20 tax bills. And uh, if you don't get a tax bill, just drop a dime and call Karen and get it, you know, verbally and send it out. Um, you know, I think 
20 bucks is, you know, 20 bucks, 27 bucks, whatever it is, but, you know, I did have to pay mine when, even though it wasn't even my fault. Um, you know, again, it's, it, you know it's coming. It's not like it's a surprise. Uh, the reason I found out I didn't pay my tax bill was when I got my second tax bill and it said I still owe. That's how I found out. <laughs> you know, otherwise, I, you know, thought I had paid mine completely. But, you know, I had to bite that bullet and I was not going to enjoy doing it. It wasn't my fault. But. Well, when I was made aware at some point after February 10th that this letter <clears throat> came in, I, I had a conversation with Karen, and I'll just you know share that one of the first things she wanted to make sure I understood was that we're not obligated to send out bills. I think it's a good thing we do. Um, but the other thing that I learned from the conversation with her was that you can't get both. It's either going to be delivered electronically or through the mail, which was why, uh, and she couldn't really explain what happened the first time they tried to delete his email address and why that didn't happen, but she was able to confirm with me that it has been deleted as of this point, and so he will be receiving those paper bills in the future. Um, so, I certainly understand both your points. If we are going to relieve him of his tax burden, then I'll entertain a uh, motion and a second to do so. <coughs> I'd make that motion. Okay. I'll second it to move the question. Very good. Uh, any more discussion? Okay. Um, we're going to have to adjust any line items in our budget for this amount? No, I, I believe that you just have to sign the form once I get it together and then it goes to Karen and she does something on her end. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I just hope that it doesn't open up a whole can of worm and you know, everybody else is late. Right. It's gonna, I, mean, I understand this is snafu with electronics. I can certainly see that as a potential excuse, but again, you know, you know it's coming. But. Right. Well, I think that uh, <clears throat> what you just hit on is the whole issue of precedent. Mm. And so, um, and it's a valid point, just like Dick's points are valid. Any, uh, any kind of uh, response or, or anything you want to address on the topic of uh, setting a precedent on this, Dick? Are you concerned about that at all? Yes, I would be. I, I think that it would be uh, wrong for the town to feel obligated to relieve everyone of their tax, uh, the interest on their tax because of uh, forgetfulness or um, their own neglect. I still feel that this is we're somewhat culpable for this problem on his, <coughs> on his uh, issue, and yeah, I certainly would not like to open up a whole can of worms on this, but uh, I feel that we can. And if Karen said it is, we're not obligated to send out a tax bill. I was wondering if we should make it a policy that maybe not send it out, but make sure that people have either a hard copy mailed or an electronic copy because if we have a reval year, they don't know what their obligation is. Mm -hmm. I think that the tax bill would actually save us money in the office because if people have to call up what is you know what do I owe what do I owe they could be spending hours a day answering the question what do I owe on my taxes so I think if we made it a policy that the town of Jackson will send out an electronic or a hard copy tax bill to every property we do that already I know, but she's saying we don't have to, and somehow 
uh, he would have been obligated, even though right. we never informed him or notified him. I think one way to um, avoid a, press, a bad precedent would be to say, yes, we send out a tax bill, either electronic or a hard copy. And, uh, Make that a policy. Yeah, and, and we talk about it, you know, that if you don't get one, for some reason, you've changed your mailing address, whatever, check with us, because, you know, you but owe it should, your money. It shouldn't absolve you from the interest, though. That's what I'm, I think that should be part of the policy, is the fact that, you know, like, I, I could say, okay, I never got my tax bill. You know, maybe it didn't, maybe it got right. stuffed maybe in I'm my... I'm not getting taxes. No, 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 therefore, I'm not getting taxes this year. I don't have to pay any interest, because I never actually opened up the bill. It could easily be put in one of those lovely... You know, flyers we get in our mail all the time slipped in between the next and accidentally tossed in the garbage. I could certainly understand that. Okay. And therefore, I didn't get my bill. Okay, I'm not going to have to pay any interest on it because I didn't get my bill. You know, I think, you know, we have to be careful about that. You can access it in two minutes, though. Pardon? You can access it on, on your website in two minutes. Mm -hmm. I had to do it for my IRS taxes the other day. Mm -hmm. It takes two minutes. Mm -hmm. Who thinks of that? Well, you have to. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't matter. <clears throat> it's accessible. It's okay, just, I, you know, I I certainly it. see the um, making people responsible for themselves mm. and say, no, oh, you you owe your taxes whether you got the bill or not. Maybe the dog ate it. Got my homework. Got your tax bill. Um, and you owe the money. I'll go with that. Okay. Uh, does that mean you want to withdraw a motion? Yep. Do you have to withdraw your second first? <laughs> well, my second, second. One second. <laughs> I'll un first. Oh, we just vote on the motion. We just vote on the motion that we have on the floor. Okay. All those in favor of the motion of uh, requesting forgiveness for Ryman McLean of $27.76 uh, say aye. All those opposed? Yep. Nay. Mm -hmm. And there we have it. So, uh, how are we going to inform Ryman that we had thoughtful discussion and decided he needed to be charged anyway? Well, we can write a letter or we can tell Karen to contact him. Okay. Uh, I guess if, if you, when you see her, and I know she couldn't be here tonight because she had some uh, family stuff come up, uh, let her know if she uh, feels like. Uh, what she would like is a slight letter from us. We can put one together. Sure. Okay. Thanks for all the input out there. Uh, those that attended and had some opinions to weigh in with. Um, was there anything else under new business that you wanted to bring up? Dick? Nope. You would I have an old business. Oh, okay. Well, the... Coincidentally enough, we're moving on to Article 6, Old Business. Um, 6A, this is just an FYI. Uh, petition warrant articles were due February 7th, according to RSA 39-3, uh, not later than the fifth Tuesday before the day prescribed for an annual meeting. Was that just to clarify the discussion we had last time? Okay. So that's how it reads. Okay, fair enough. Um, what else did you have, Dick? You uh, have? On posting the uh, ongoing budget figures. Mm -hmm. The operating budget? The operating budget that we would post it uh, here and on our website, not on the e-news. Mm -hmm. That the e-news is a private enterprise uh, our website is ours. Okay. So if we would post it here and on uh, the website, I think that would be more appropriate. So that would be a revision or a yeah, revision. Sounds good. Does that make sense to you, John? Yeah. All right. Did you still um, want it monthly? Did you still want it monthly? monthly yeah, quarterly. I would do it quarterly. 
and I'm happy with you know quarterly accounting. I think that's plenty. Because anyone that still comes in, they and you can it. still get the information in between if you need it, but I think quarterly would be fine. <coughs> Yeah, the numbers are produced every payroll anyways, right? Every week. Uh, the yeah, full I mean, sheet. The full were, sheet. If yeah. someone were to come in and mm -hmm. request a copy, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We did not uh, make that decision with a motion and a second and a vote, if I remember correctly, at our last meeting. That we would post. We just kind of said we would. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, therefore, we don't necessarily need to make that revision with a motion and right, a second and a vote. No, I just say we will. Okay, great. Excellent. All right. That's it for old business that I have. Um, down to agenda item number seven, public comments again. Anybody? Hey, what's up? Stare down. None. Uh, <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Hearing none, then I'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Let's make that motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. aye.